Hi everyone, welcome to this eBay webinars workshop on eBay dropshipping profits. My name is Edwin. Now today I'm going to share with you some of the uh, experiences that I have on eBay dropshipping. And you will learn today why people fail on eBay dropshipping. Now I will discuss with you some of the factors that I have encountered and personally I would want you to know before you jumping into this business and how to find profitable products uh, to sell uh, even without any software now we know that there are a lot of research tools out there to help you with uh, searching for profitable products but before you go into that i would think as a beginner you should learn how to research profitable products especially using the existing ebay tool and how you can shortcut your successes by as much as six months now there is a story about this uh, where i tried to figure out uh, this whole thing of drop shipping where i actually delay my success by six months so i hope you don't make these mistakes so let's go on so why drop shipping you might ask well basically drop shipping is something that you want to look into especially if your friend told you that drop shipping is easy to do well, actually, dropshipping is a scalable business where you can actually scale it uh, even from just a very, very small amount, like making a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars every month. And there is also minimum cost uh, for startup. A lot of people wanted to do a part-time job or wanted to have something part-time online, but they are figuring out whether they should do internet marketing, they should do uh, advertisement, their e-commerce site. Well, I would say that if you're a beginner into uh, e-commerce, I would suggest that you start with eBay dropshipping because the cost that uh, that's involved is quite minimum. Uh, we are looking at somewhere between 100 to 150 USD per month so if you have such small amount of money that you can set aside you can definitely run a drop shipping business and it is a truly automated income model without outsourcing so what do I mean by automated well actually you need someone help to, you need someone to help you to automate all the daily tasks that you would be doing especially when you need to list you need to customer service you need to do all the various things that's related to drop shipping so initially when you begin you might be started off as one person but eventually expanding to a team and you can get an automated source of income with scalable business model in place and lastly, you want a desired lifestyle. So you might wonder why dropshipping can give it desired lifestyle. Because dropshipping can do it anywhere. Once you have a proper system or process in place, you can literally work anywhere. You can also outsource uh, your business. And at the same time, you can travel around or you prefer to work from home or you prefer to, or to replace your full-time job. So yeah, we actually wanted to you actually wanted to have a desired lifestyle so everyone is different but by using this vehicles or this ebay dropshipping model you can reach your goal earlier so who am i to teach you all this well let me just quickly uh, browse through and, and not to advertise myself uh, i'm an ebay power seller i'm a top rated seller since uh, 2009 I am also a certified education specialist uh, prior to uh, being a power seller. So basically I work with eBay and I was certified by eBay in Singapore uh, to work with the local SME to help them get their products listed uh, onto the uh, eBay platform. And also I'm a Quora active contributor. So if you so if you come to this webinars uh, via the Quora uh, way, meaning that you saw my link on Quora and you click on the link and come to this webinars, uh, you will also notice that I am an active contributor with over 200,000 views. Next, uh, I have worked with a company like IBM and uh, I'm a certified uh, big data uh, specialist. Uh, I have actually uh, spent a couple of years, uh, close to seven years with IBM. With an analytic background, so basically I could analyze data in bite size instead of uh, chunking out. You can actually look at data uh, at bite size, which is easier to digest. I'm also a Skillshare instructor with over 9,000 students and over 60 plus classes uh, just uh, last year alone, uh, which uh, I focus a lot on uh, education and helping anyone that's interested to learn new skills uh, to embark on this journey. So first of all, how to fail in dropshipping, you might ask. Well, first of all, a lot of uh, new sellers or 
uh, dropshipper forgot something that they need to account into it, which is the eBay fees. Uh, there are fees that are involved, which include your eBay store fee, uh, the listing fees, and the final valuation fees. So everything will account to your final profits. And as a dropshipper, you need to account for all these fees. Next, the fees that uh, PayPal will impose on you, which is the 3.9% plus uh, 30 cent if you sell in US. This is depending on the country that you're in. Well, I'm just taking uh, USA for the reference where I sell in most of the time. And there's also this thing called the state tax. Uh, if you sell uh, in US, you basically understand that, uh, for example, US, uh, Amazon USA, uh, they charge you uh, something from 7 to 10% sales tax each time you purchase something. So there is a way go around or there's a way to look into how you can actually purchase product without a tax. Which I will touch on in my future webinars. Next uh, is uh, the break-even point. Well, every business, uh, you need to know the product cost and also how much you need to sell in order to break even. Uh, why is it important to know? Well, it determines a lot how much you take back every month. Your profits. Uh, profits basically uh, is the fuel for all business. So without profits, basically, you won't be able to run your business for long. And even if you want to scale, you need the profits to hire more VAs, to hire uh, people that do accounting for you, to hire a team of people to run this business for you so that you just need to manage the people. So how to find your break even? Basically, you need to account in all the fees that involve. For example, like I mentioned in the previous slide, the uh, eBay fees, the PayPal fees, and the tax. So these are the three main fees you need to factor it each time you list a product on eBay. The next thing we want to look at is the source. So where do you source your product? Now first of all, you need to ask yourself, is the source that you're sourcing from, are they stable? Can they supply you with the demand? So say for example, you're selling a product A, and this product A is, is very sellable, and you can only sell 100 units of that, and the, uh, your source suddenly go out of stock. So what do you do? So how do you find out, and how do you determine whether the source is stable or not? Now, the product source stability have very much to do with your ongoing selling velocity or momentum, so to speak. You need to have a good selling momentum in order to maintain uh, your daily sales. You also need to take into account the uh, daily price fluctuation of individual products. Now, there are a lot of tools out there that allows you to track instantly the price fluctuation and do repricing for each individual products. Uh, a lot of uh, beginners uh, do this manually via an Excel, uh, which I did it uh, when I first started off. There is a lot of uh, effort involved and time that's being involved in order to track uh, all the individual items, especially when the item go out of stock. And you, if you have a sales, then you need to think of ways to fulfill this order. And eventually, if you can't fulfill the order, you have to cancel the order, which is very un uh, which is not the outcome that you want as well. So you need to take into account price fluctuation uh, automatically, uh, which is the advice that I would like to give to you. And what are the alternative sources that you can fill this order? Do you have alternate sources? Uh, some dropshipper would say that yeah, there are many big retailers out there. We can actually buy from them. So especially, especially if you are an international seller, this might be a problem. Uh, for example, myself is an international seller. I'm not located in USA, and I do not have a stock that's being stored in the USA warehouse. So what do I do? I need to find alternative sources. And alternative sources have been the most uh, important factors that you need to have, especially if you are running into hottest month of the, of the year, for example, Christmas. You need to find your alternative sources. One other sources that a lot of people mention is uh, AliExpress or just sourcing directly from China. This is uh, one of the greatest sources which a lot of people, or especially dropshipper, would want to source from. Next uh, is to list. So what's about listing? And do you plan how many and how often do you list? Well, this is a very important factor, especially if you want consistent sale every day. You need to plan uh, how much to list and how often to list. So my advice is to list every day consistently, even if you can list 10 products every day. Uh, this has very much to do with the Cassini engine 
uh, which especially they will track your activities on eBay, how often do you list, how often do you respond back to your customer. So a lot of factors is involved but the number th one thing that you need to do is to list consistently every day. You can do this without any software. You can do this manually and eventually when you scale and you have enough profits, you get the tools to help you. Next, you need a unique title uh, which is optimized. So how to uh, create a unique optimal titles? Basically, uh, you need to take a look into uh, some of the uh, best sellers on eBay. Look at the titles, uh, what the uh, seller is using. Later on, I will show you examples of some of the good titles that you can actually modify or you can actually uh, take reference from. Well, a research tool uh, or not, or the free way, uh, the research method is the same. You could be researching uh, different products or researching uh, a particular seller. So later on, I will show it to you how to research properly. And also there's a way to which you can come up with a unique picture uh, which I call it the picture optimizations. On eBay, uh, there's a few factors that make your listing stand out. First is your listing title. Second is your picture. So we need to make good use of these two sets to help you sell more. So we can take a look later and uh, I'll show you some quick example how uh, this can be done. Not forgetting the item specific which uh, eBay have placed great emphasis especially after they changed the search engine. Uh, item specific have been one of the most important especially when someone to search for a particular color a particular size they will actually they will actually look into the item specific uh, if there is a specific models they will also look they also look into the item specific so having your item specific fill up the correct way and as much as possible will help you in your ranking on eBay as well we shall take a look at uh, one example later on on how eBay dropshipper actually have the item specific state in their listing and also you need to have business policy so are you creating the right business policies does your dropshipping business actually fit into the business policy that you have set up now this is very important especially uh, if you're doing if you're just starting off dropshipping so I wouldn't expect you to ship your item within three days uh, you need to tailor your business policy as and when uh, your business changes you can also look into some of the examples on how other dropshippers state their business policy later on. Okay, let's try to find some popular products on eBay. I'll give you a short demo on this. Hi guys, uh, in this section of the workshop, I'm going to share with you how you can research on eBay for profitable items to sell and also at the same time to know what is selling well. So first of all, we want to find what is selling well. Uh, by searching on eBay, probably you won't find much. So the first step we can do is uh, let's go to the uh, Google and search for bestseller on Amazon. And we want to find the uh, bestseller that is on Amazon, which is uh, the second link over here. You can click on this link. So on this page, you can see that there are multiple tabs at the top. Uh, bestsellers, new releases, movers and shakers, most uh, wish for or give ideas. Uh, all these tabs are pretty good uh, research uh, ideas that you can have uh, which you know what the customer or uh, they are buying now and they wish for. Probably I would like to go to the mover and shaker for this, uh, for this time. So you can search on the left hand side any uh, departments that you wish. So we could uh, proceed on to one of the categories like home and kitchen. And let's pick the products from here. Yeah. So all these are popular items, you can see that their ratings are pretty high and the price are not as high. Okay, so we could pick one of the product like this one, 10 inch portable fan. So click on this uh, listing. And what we want to do is uh, to copy the title, the whole title over here. Control C and go to eBay and do a search by using the search bar. Okay, the result page uh, bring up to us is showing that this particular brand fan, the exact one is selling for $39.80 at this moment. And on Amazon site, let's take a look again, it's $24.47. So there's a profit margin that you can make by selling this fan. Okay, 
Okay, so what we want to do the first step is to look through uh, the competitors and let's see just the, by the number of sellers. So in total, we can see that there is about 200 results, yeah, 200 results for this particular title. And by looking through the title, we can see that most of the people that is selling or the dropshipper that are selling, uh, they do not optimize much on their titles. So I'm just trying to scroll through and show you an example of a good optimized title. Uh, for example, this one, they're selling at 58.30 uh, cents. This is much uh, optimized because this person or this seller is using more than, uh, around close to the 80 characters limit. Yep. Some of the uh, products, some of the uh, sellers, uh, they, they know exactly what the buyer are searching for. Yeah. So typically, I will not put the brands uh, on the uh, title page. I will rather pack it with uh, keywords that my buyer is searching for. Okay, so let's quickly scroll down. So in general, the price is around 40 plus or 50 plus. Okay, so you can see from this page alone, a lot of people do not know how to optimize the title. And in a way, if you do not know how to optimize the title, you are you will not be able to sell at the price that you wish to sell your products for. Okay, so other than confirming that this is a popular product, so a lot of people are selling it, I also want to know what exactly this product is selling for. So again, we can conduct a search by using the advanced search on the right hand side, called the advanced search. And let's search this product, the title, sold listing by now. So let's do a quick search. So what I'm trying to find out now is exactly how much people are paying for right at this moment. So the result actually is sorted by recent first. Yeah, that means the or the latest uh, product that's sold for and how much the price is being sold for for this particular product. So let's quickly just scroll it through. So in general, the actual closing price of these products is around 20 plus to 30 plus. Okay, so there is a retailer, the overstock retailers, uh, selling for 35.44. Let's find out whether is it true that this particular retailer is selling at this much. So there's one. So let's look at the uh, closing price. So just to take note, the price as stated here might not be what is sold over here. Yeah, so you can see that. The price actually was sold for is thirty two forty four cents, and not whatever that is entered over here, which is thirty five forty four. So what this particular uh, retailer is trying to do is to push up the price of these products. So probably he's just throwing out one product to sell, uh, to get a lot of other buyer to come in to take a look at the store. Uh, this is his marketing tactics, which he want to market this product. So in a way, you are trying to route in the traffic by selling way below the market price. So this is one of the way. Let's go back and look at the uh, close price. So in fact, let's look at the latest price that's been closed, which is this guy, twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, let's take a look at this listing. Seems to me this is quite an optimized listing, except that this person put in the branding over here. And also take a look at the uh, ranking of this particular seller. It's uh, quite a pretty high ranking sellers. And he sold 238 of these products at this price. Um, you can say that the price would have gone up quite a bit. Another way to check is to go into the uh, number of sold listing. Just by clicking on the sold listing so you can see that he's consistently selling this even for the month of September August consistently almost consistently every day and do know at this point uh, August 31st yep yeah, so this is the place uh, this is the point where the price start to jump to $30 yeah. so this person initially is just trying to get in the sales velocity the sales momentum so like I've said the uh, sales momentum is pretty simple. You just need to pull, pull in the number of uh, buyer for these products and in order to pull in 
the products you need to sell at a lower price. Eventually, once you have the number of uh, sellers that's buying every single day, you can up the price. So this is how this person is uh, positioning himself. So do you think this is a good product to start selling? Yeah, it's not. So because this particular person have already spent a bit of money in terms of getting in the sales, most of the sales will go to this first listing over here. And if you try to compete, you will need to sell way below the price, which is below 24.47. And basically, you'll be selling at a loss. So as for beginners, I would not suggest you selling it even at $20 or $19, unless you can source it uh, from someone else. So let's say that you want to source it from Amazon. So is it possible at a lower price? And you can see that this is a uh, used and new. Over here on the right hand side, there's 19 seller. Let's click on this. Majority on the top is Amazon used item. Let's move it down. So the cheapest you can get is only $24.47 without any tax from this particular supplier. Yeah. And unless you are able to source similar item uh, on Amazon, if not, I would not suggest you selling these products. Okay, the next step I would do is I would go and confirm that there is no other seller that's selling this or that if there is a similar uh, products, a similar products that is uh, selling at a low price. So again, I'll take the title 10 inch portable fan. I'll copy and I'll go to the main page of the Amazon so that I want to get the full result and not to search a particular department so 10 inch portable thing let's search so objective of this search is to find out is it that I could source cheaper on Amazon okay so let's click on Prime so if you are Amazon Prime you know that it's uh, free shipping and 2 days free shipping and we want to sort by the lowest price to the highest so you can see from the result, there's only 5 result, 10 inch portable fan. This guy we have seen, which is too expensive. And like I mentioned, this product is not a go, uh, it's not a good product to start selling now, even though there's a lot of people buying it. So unless you can source it cheaper than $20 uh, somewhere else, and you can mark it up to the current price of $29.99. For a profit if not I would not suggest you to sell these products so you can see that by searching through the uh, best sellers on Amazon uh, you will give you a glimpse into what is selling well but it doesn't mean that it will sell well for you it might sell well for other eBay dropshipper eBay sellers but not sell well for you because you are beginning so what you need to do is you need to find a products that you could sell for good profits at least so let's uh, do this again. Go back to the Amazon. Let's go back to the bestseller page. And let's pick another product from one of the departments. Let's go to another different categories like kitchen and dining. So you'll see that uh, what I've done just now, it doesn't mean that the research I searched for the first time, I will find profitable products to sell. Uh, sometimes you need to do it a few times before you get the idea so it's good to practice every day and to find products that is profitable and to list them okay uh, probably I will just pick this scissors it is a ultra sharp premium heavy duty kitchen shears and multi-purpose scissors so let's copy the title again Let's go to eBay. Let's go to the main page and search for this and see how many sellers we are against. So why do I do this? That also to explain it to you, to look at the competition, how many people or dropshipper are selling these particular products. So you can see that there are in total 101 sellers on eBay.
Yeah. So by knowing the number of competition out there, you can roughly know whether do you stand to sell. So yeah, to confirm whether you sell or not, you just take the title, go to the advanced page, and the advanced search itself, you just look at the sold listing, the buy it now, and do a search. Okay, we want to know the recent transacted price, and we, eBay even tell us that it's trending at fifteen thirty cent. So if you can't sell anything lower than this, uh, don't bother selling these products. It will not sell, and you will not make money from it. And let's see the Amazon price is already twelve dollar ninety five cents. And let's see whether does this contain any text. Let's click from here. So there's no tax. We can see from here there's no tax here. Yeah? Zero tax. And by selling at this price, uh, fourteen fifty eight or even fifteen thirty cent, you will only make a uh, quite a marginal, uh, so called profits. Maybe not even profits for you, uh, if your eBay and PayPal fees are high. So I also would not suggest selling these products. Yeah, it's true enough that there are some people that could sell twenty four ninety four cent, but is it the truth? So you could also click on the title itself and take a look at the uh, soap products. One soap. Let's click on it. Okay, it was sold for nineteen dollars and fifty nine cent, and probably this person made a couple of dollars. Uh, yeah. And why this person is able to sell at this price, nineteen dollar plus, and not this price, huh? twenty four ninety four. This is not the actual price. First of all, the title. Yeah, the title is maxing out the eighty characters limit. I would not suggest using a title, a uh, uh, so called a branding over here. Yeah, you will not put your listing. Uh, you will not actually put your listing in a very good position against all other sellers. Another thing is that this is a seasoned seller. Let's take a look at the item specific. There is UPC, and there's a brand here. There is the EAN part number, and this person listing is pretty simple. Yeah. So I mentioned before in the, the previous slides that uh, item specific are very important. So make sure that you can fill up as many as possible. Uh, take a look at this five star product ratings. So where do we get this? Well, eBay actually draw it from the UPC or the past sales record. Uh, if there's any other seller that also sold this and they receive good feedback, it will all be consolidated into this product ratings. And in terms, uh, it will be shown. Let's see. In terms, it will be shown on the first page, on the page over here. So you get this five star. And a lot of uh, sellers leveraging on this. Yeah, you can see. It is a pattern. Okay, so this product uh, would not suggest you to sell. If you want to sell, you need to check your profit margin. How much can you make from it? Uh, again, let's go back and see what else can we choose from. Okay, let's pick a simple product like this uh, digital food cooking thermometer. Okay, so again, we're going to copy the title. And we are going to uh, search again using the main search. Now you might want to ask me: Is there any, like, uh, how do you see wh whether how many sellers are there selling, and whether you should sell or not? Okay, so there is actually no fixed answer. Some products, uh, maybe they are not so popular. But some pop popular products, you get a lot of sellers. So it actually have to depends on what is your source price, how much can you source it at, and whether can you source it at a much lower price for higher profits. So do not just be uh, taken aback if you see like 200 persons selling the same thing. You might still be able to sell the thing, but uh, you need to make sure that your source price is much lower than them. So you can see that this particular uh, digital food meat thermometer sold 868 times 
even though we can see that there's also other sellers that are seller, selling the similar products but this person is selling $9.98 and the price that you can and the price that you're trying to uh, source for is $10.34 so again this gives you an example that this product you should not be selling yeah first of all you also need to take a look at the title this is a well optimized title look at the sellers is actually maxing out all the 80 characters and to take a look deeper into the listing itself so at one glance we, we I can tell you this product you should not be selling it you will not sell it uh, even if you will sell it probably you will not make money this person is make, uh, selling it at $9.98 meaning that he's sourcing it from somewhere else yeah definitely on somewhere else and there is 32 positive product ratings you have a very high feedback plenty of pictures so in order to compete with this any person or any seller, make sure that you have at least 12 pictures. Okay, so this product is uh, not a good product to sell again. Once we can decide on the first part, it doesn't even pass through uh, what we want. Uh, we can just keep this and look for another item. Okay, so let's search for another item over here. How about this uh, cast iron scallop? Okay, let's take the title. Let's take the full title over here. Let's take the full title and copy it to eBay and paste it. Okay, we have 230 results. Yeah. And the latest seller is trying to sell it at $32.92. Wow, let's take a look at how much is the source price. Well, you can flip for at least two times profit. Let's investigate further on this. Some people sell it at 39. So probably you can make it uh, off at $30. So you understand, take a look at all these product ratings. Yeah. Uh, there's this 29 product ratings, meaning that this person and this person is using two different uh, UPC. And the UPC uh, seems like on this part is giving very good result. If this person is selling at uh, $63.99, uh, I, I'm sure that you should uh, follow the uh, UPC or copy the UPC. Okay, so for these products, uh, we can take a look further. Let's go to the advanced search. If you want to sort and buy it now, search. Okay, so from here, we can see that the uh, cast iron scallop uh, pre-season pan sold for $18.61, $28.99, $28 and how much more? $27, $19. So you can see that people are willing to pay uh, just to get this pen. Uh, we, let's take a look at this $28.99. I'm quite curious why this person sell at this price. Is it the true value? Two sold. Pretty new sellers. So let's take a look. Wow, this person really sold it at $28.19. And initially started off at eighteen dollars and nineteen cent. It's a ten dollars jump. Okay, how you can improve on this listing? First of all, the number of pictures is only four, so you can have twelve, and you can also try to combine a few pictures into one, like combining these pictures, this four five picture into one pictures. So this this one will give you the unique picture advantage. Okay, let's see. His item specific is uh, not a lot, so you can win him on this part. Just add in more item specific, and your rating should be even. Your ranking should be even better than him. And you can go ahead to sell at this price, twenty eight dollars ninety nine cent or twenty eight dollars ninety eight cents. So this product is a pass for me. You can sell this product. So this is how you research on products that can sell or to give you a good profit margin on eBay. So I'll see you in the next session. So in this part, I want to talk about tracking your numbers. So when I say numbers, it's uh, referring to how much profit are you making per month. Uh, most beginners, they do not track how much they are making uh, per transaction. It is very important that you track how much you make per transaction or per sales. 
So normally for myself, I will create an Excel with all the related fields uh, which I track individual products in terms of whether I'm making a loss or making a profit. And you could download a copy of this uh, Excel uh, from my uh, Facebook uh, Dropship Mastery group. So how much revenues uh, per month are you making? So without knowing this uh, revenue per month that you're making, you will not be able to adjust uh, the next month revenue, how much you want to make and how much sales you need to push for. So in a way, uh, if you want to scale up your business uh, really fast, you have to understand the numbers. And lastly, also how much uh, to list on eBay? Do you have a plan? You actually need a plan in order to achieve your goal. So by knowing how much you can list or you will be able to list each day on eBay, you are able to plan out the profit by knowing your sell-through rate and at the same time how many products you need to list in order to get the relevant sales in. You also want to know uh, the profits per item that you can bring in, how much you can bring in uh, per day so that you can reach your monthly goal. So in summary, uh, in this webinar you have learned that how most people feel in dropshipping which I've shared with you my personal experience and how you can avoid all these mistakes. How to find profitable products to sell uh, by looking through the best seller on Amazon and comparing them on eBay and finding out for who are the best sellers and looking at their titles and item specific and why you should be tracking your sales numbers especially if you are doing drop shipping business uh, you need to treat every transaction like a business whether you make a profit or not well, whether you're making a profit or you're making a loss you need to know how to adjust the numbers so the objective at the end of the game is to have more winners than losers And if you're stuck, it's good to get help, to get a mentorship or to get someone that you can consult with. Especially if you're starting off and do not know what to do, rather than trying everything out, uh, wasting time and trying to figure out yourself, it's good to speak to somebody. You can speak to me, which I can go through with you some of the uh, some, what are uh, selling tools that you should be using and what are different things that you need to work out for, how do you actually uh, do a research uh, using some of the research tool. So if you have a question, please ask now. Okay, actually some of the, uh, I saw some of the commonly asked questions that I have over here is that uh, somebody is asking what is the difference uh, when drop shipping from AliExpress and Amazon? Well. AliExpress model is a bit different. Basically, you need to purchase the product uh, whenever there is a sale from this China website called AliExpress.com and then you send directly to your customer bypassing uh, your third party. For example, the third party warehouse in the uh, US like for example, Amazon. And it's a totally different model. If you are trying to apply this uh, to drop shipping, I would suggest uh, as a beginner, stay away from it first. Uh, get a hang of Amazon fulfillment. Uh, fulfill directly for Amazon warehouse and understand the, your customer first before uh, jumping into AliExpress. Okay, the next question is, uh, do people know the product came from Amazon when drop ship? Well, the answer is yes, they do know. And is it a concern for you? Well, actually for Amazon, they do ship the products out using the Amazon box. Uh, one thing you can do is you can check on the uh, gift receipts. Yeah, so when the person receives this, uh, you will not, they will know, the, your buyer will not know the actual price. But uh, you can, if the buyer were to ask you, you can say that you're using Amazon as a fulfillment, fulfillment center, which a lot of big players are using fulfillment center from Amazon. So there's nothing wrong with it. So do not be... Uh, be afraid to tell your buyer that. Next question is why do I need to use Amazon gift card when buying products? Well you could choose to pay using your credit card uh, but at the end of the day you want to keep track of the numbers of uh, the amount of money that you spend on Amazon. So the best is to purchase gift card directly using your credit card. I'm sure that there are also third party charging you a credit card, uh, charging you a gift card, but you need to pay a certain percentage. And also take note that certain country, uh, if you work with the credit card company, you can actually get a cashback of up to 4%, which, person which personally I'm using, uh, the Citibank reward card. 
Another advantage of using the gift card is that uh, whenever you have a customer refund, the money can be refunded directly into a gift card. Uh, if you were to refund it back to the credit card, it might take you up to a month. So I would rather not let my money lock down uh, by the uh, credit card company. Okay, next question is, uh, since people can buy cheaper from Amazon, why would people still want to buy from eBay? Well, this question has been asked many, many times, uh, especially in Quora. Uh, if you came from Quora, you understand I've answered this question many times. So I'll, I'll answer one more time. The reason is because, uh, if, uh, just to give you an example, if you buy from a specific supermarket, would you rather travel like 20 miles to go to the next supermarket to buy something? So some people pay for convenience, some people pay for a custom, some people pay for comfortable. They're comfortable buying from certain store. They're comfortable and they have the thinking that or the mindset that uh, certain stores actually sell cheaper than anywhere else. So they don't like to compare. They are loyal to certain platform. For example, they are loyal to eBay. They are eBay buyers for 10 years. And you suddenly ask them to switch to buying from Amazon. They will say um, Amazon is too expensive. Or Amazon uh, doesn't meet their expectation. The Amazon don't have a specific customer service. So there can be 101 reason um, people buy from you. And one thing for dropshipper, do not sell cheap. You can sell at a competitive price, but don't sell cheap. Uh, you want to be on the first page, but not the cheapest. Yeah. In this webinar, I also would like to offer a one-to-one -one coaching uh, program to you. So it's just limited to five person, and uh, I will only be coaching you for an hour. But for this one hour, we are going to uh, go through, like for example, what do you need in order to run a proper dropshipping business? and so also to answer any question that you have on eBay dropshipping. Plus, uh, if you want to get higher profits from your current uh, eBay store, which you are rerunning, you can speak to me. I can point to you some resources and help you plan out uh, for your December sales. For example, Christmas is coming. And if you want to free up your time, especially for those who are really running eBay business and they are consistently getting sales and they would like to scale higher or want to free up their time, you can speak to me, I can point to you or to uh, tell you how actually I train my VAs and you can get your own VAs uh, from uh, with everything trained. Uh, I will be uh, providing this service as well if you need me to, to train your VA at the same time. Uh, I will pass the VA that is being trained to you so they can uh, pass the rest of the, your company business processes to the person. So how much do I charge for this one-to-one -one coaching? Well, I'm not going to charge you a few hundred dollars, not even hundred dollars. So it's just going to be sixty dollars uh, for an hour coaching. And it's only limited to five person, so it's good that you click on the button below now to secure a seat at this moment. So for ongoing support, you can access uh, my dropshipping web, uh, dropshipping uh, Facebook group, uh, which is at the uh, Facebook Dropship Mastery. Uh, it's free for anyone who wanted to join this master mastery group. Uh, you can you can post the question that you have in mind. Uh, someone in the group or myself will answer you. And thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next webinar.